Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at this battery by Dr. Prepare. Now this is a 100 amp hour, 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. Now this battery is a little bit different from what you're normally used to seeing and that they've incorporated this little module that clicks on on top of the battery. And as you can see here, this module here has some Anderson connectors. Now these are rather small ones, I believe they're 10 amp. And then we also have a USB-A and a USB-C. We have another USB-C. And we have a, another Anderson connector. And as you can see here on this first one, this says solar in. So this can do, I believe it's 12 to 25 volt up to 4.2 amps, which only works out to just over 80 watts. So you can have roughly an 80 watt panel powering through this device into the battery. Now the Anderson connector on the 12 volt out, they also supply this little cigarette lighter to Anderson connector so that you can simply plug this in and you can have a cigarette lighter on the top of the battery. So if we take a look at the battery itself, we have a couple of nylon straps here to carry the battery, which is very handy. Uh, we also have a on button here for a power indicator. As you can see right now, the battery is fully charged. I'm going to do a discharge test on this to see if we have the 100 amp hours. And then also on the top here, we have the plug that you simply open up and put this little rubber guy. Should be able to just put that little rubber inside of the port here and it doesn't want to stay. Stay. No. So I had to push down in the back where the little rubber comes out and then guide that like that. And now I should simply be able to snap that in. Now, if I press the on button here, just press it once, nothing. Oh, there we go. So now I can see here, I have a, a blue light that's indicating that it's on. And there's another uh, light here and that's gonna be green and that's gonna show you when it's charging uh, off of solar or what have you. Let's take a look at the manual here for the power pack. Okay, so we have output 10 to 14.6 volt, 12 amps battery charging. So that's at the bottom port. I guess that's the port that's underneath of here. So if you wanted to connect directly with your own Anderson connectors for charging, you could do up to 12 amps. I would probably just charge directly off of the posts here because you can get the full uh, battery capacity off of these. So actually, I'm just gonna put up on screen the specifications page here, and that way you can pause and have a look at it. Indicators when charging, the green indicator will light up, which we discussed here. Actually, let's, um, well, I've got a full battery on this right now. After we do our discharge test, I'll plug in a bench power supply and pretend that we're putting solar in through the solar input here. But I believe this does, and I believe this would have, uh, judging by the voltage range, I'm going to say a PWU uh, charger, which is a pulse width modulating uh, solar charge controller in there. Optimal charging is going to be 20 amps and maximum charging is 50 amps. So you can do a 0.5 C charge rate on this battery. 3000 cycles to 80% depth of discharge. Low temperature protection. So we'll test that, do a teardown and we'll find that sensor and see if I can't trip it. Overcharging, over discharging, over current, short circuit, high and low temperature, offering excellent performance, prolonged lifespan, plus IP65 waterproof and V0 flame resistant rating. I'm not sure what the flame resistant rating is. Oh, so you can connect these batteries in 12, 24, 36, or 48 volts. And you can also parallel them to do up to 400 amp hours, so four batteries. Oh, it looks like we might actually have cylindrical cells now in this battery pack, which is actually more expensive to build. So the fact that they're using cylindrical, but we'll open it up and take a look. Also what you get in the box is we get a pair of these mounting brackets. These plates here will go on to the bottom. You can see there's little knockouts here. So you will place which way would this go? This way here. So you'd place that on there and then that's gonna give you a mounting point in order to mount it to the floor in your RV or trailer, which is very nice. 
So you have some mounting options. Uh, we got some hardware with that. Uh, we also get these terminal screws. Now this is just a bolt and a washer. Uh, I would recommend adding a split washer in here just to make sure that these do not back off over time. Your lug first, the washer, the split washer, and then the bolt, and then tighten that all down. So next, let's do our discharge test and we'll see if we get our 100 amp hours. Okay, a bit of a snag uh, trying to hook up to my tester is that these washers are actually too big. It's not allowing my lugs to sit properly and I'm just using regular lugs. So I'm gonna have to switch over to a different style of connector bolt in order for it to sit properly. So that's something you may run into is that the washers that they supply are a little bit too big. It's not allowing the lugs to sit appropriately. So you may have to switch out their washer and use your own. Okay, I think I'm just about ready to go. That's a problem with moving is you forget where everything is. I think we're ready to go. So my bench power supply is off. I'm gonna pre-charge the resistors. You can see the voltage coming up there. Oh, I didn't start a screen recording. So we're gonna pre-charge the resistors. Turning on the uh, inverter. Okay, we're up to voltage. So what I'm gonna do is just charge this battery into my bigger battery bank via this bench power supply. Increase my current. And we can see there Let's see how high I can get this to go. Now it's not 30 amps that are on these cables. I only have about just over five amps going into my bigger battery bank. But as you can see on the 12 volt side, I'm discharging at almost 30 amps, which is perfect. It's a little bit higher than a 0.2 C discharge rate, but that's fine. So I'm gonna let this run. And as you can see there at the bottom right, it's accumulating my amp hour capacity. So I'm gonna leave this run and then we'll see what the capacity test holds. Okay, and the discharge test is now complete and we just eked in a pass. So we have 100.572 amp hours out of the 100 amp hour battery. Now this may get better with time. More charging means the cells will balance more. Maybe they're just a little bit out of balance from sitting for a little while. But nonetheless, we did pass just barely, but this is a pass. So next, let's open it up and see what cells they're using. Actually, next, let's hook up a bench power supply and see what happens when we go to charge it off of solar. Now our battery, it's not completely dead, but it's pretty well dead. If we look on the bar here, we're flashing on the uh, state of charge indicator up top here. Let's see if I can turn this on, I can. We have our bench power supply here. I believe it was 25 volts for the upper. So if we go 20 volts, let's say four amps. Okay, so we have 11 to 25 volts, 4.2 amps, maximum 84 watts. So not super efficient, I mean, or well, not super expedient because what would happen is, you know, 84 watts, that's like 16 hours of pristine condition to get that. So, I mean, 16 hours you're looking at maybe five hours a day, six hours a day. So you'd be like three days, four days trying to charge this just by this uh, pack here. If I can just kind of squish that in there and this is where it could get dangerous and let's see what happens. And I have a green light indicator. You can see that there. So we are charging. Now what are we charging at? Yeah, you can see it is a, a pulse width module because you can see how it's jumping the volts like that. Let's increase the amps. That's pretty good. We're charging at about 64. Let's see if I can let that go. Okay, we're good. Yeah, so you can see it pulsing. There, you can see there now we're charging with about 60 watts. So we're getting about 60 watts going in. Seems to be going fine. Let's uh, grab a meter and see Let's increase the amperage a little bit. There we go, now we're at 4.2, 4.3. So we're actually hitting about the 80 watts and it still seems to be working just fine. Now let's test. I wonder if I can do solar and USB-C, in out USB-C. Let's try that, what do I have? Let's go with Bouge RV. I really wish this was lithium iron phosphate. This is like my go-to grab. Now, do I have a USB-C cable handy? 
Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Fast charging. Okay, I'm not seeing anything. Doesn't seem to be charging through the USB-C. Oh, maybe it needs to be the 100 watt. Okay, let me try and find another cable. Put that in there and there we go. Okay, so you need to actually use the USB-C to USB-C 100 watt. And right now we are discharging 92 watts. Now let's see what happens if I now turn the solar on. Okay, we still have 92 watts coming out of here. And we have almost 50 watts coming out of the solar. So it is taking both of them right now. Now let's see what happens if I disconnect this. Okay, now this charging is going up. So now we're at 80. Now let's plug this back in. Okay, we're still at 80 and we're at 90. So we are charging at roughly 170 watts coming from solar, which is the bench power supply, and a USB-C into the battery, which 170 watts divided by 21.8 would be about 13.28 uh, amps going into the battery. So 13 amps, not bad. Uh, next, let's open it up and see what's inside. Okay, so I have the battery apart here. You can see here's the lid. And we do in fact have uh, cylindrical cells. Now I forgot the way that this battery comes in is here's the bottom portion of the case. We have a gasket that seals around the perimeter, but we also have these wedges. And I should have gone back and watched my first video, but these wedges actually come out. And this is what uh, the battery pack sits in by. So with the friction of these wedges, this pack here slides in and then these wedges go in and it kind of clamps them in. So I should have watched my previous video. It would have saved me a bit of time. That's okay. Neat design, don't really see it very much, but that's the outside of the case there. Oh, and something I just noticed is there's an indentation in the bottom of this case here. So you can actually stack these on top of each other when you have the module plugged in. So it counts that little divot counts so you can actually stack these tall on top of each other and have these little boxes on top. Bring you in and we'll get a closer look at this. So we have a PCB module here with some wires plugged in for sensing or some kind of communication. That runs over to here which has a RXD, TXD, BGND and RST so some kind of communication between that hub there and the board. We have two conductors coming off. One goes to the positive and one goes to the negative. And this is our state of charge indicator on the case. And that runs up here. And you can see the different LED indications, LED one, two, three, and four, and a key VDD. So that's the lid. And then you can see here, this is the BMS. You see GP100-2 version 1.3-2022-0508. So that's when that board was manufactured. And you can see here, we have some resistors. I can't remember what those are called right now, but they bleed off uh, voltage to balance out the pack. And you can see here, we have a temperature sensor. Oh, and it goes behind a big glob of glue. We can see the cells. I think this one's probably going to be the most clear. So you can see the cell there. We have WTT32700, 6,000 milliamps, 3.2 volts, 2023-0729. So that is going to be the cells they're using. Now let me see if I can't get some of this off. I'm going to try and get this sensor out. Oh, I can just pull it. Perfect. I am going to go get a cold pack and see if uh, we can trip that. Now, I couldn't find a cold pack, so I got tons of snow around here. So we are charging. Drop that in some snow, and I'm still charging. Oh, sorry, I missed it. We have disconnect. So low temperature charging protection works. Let's warm that back up. Okay, you can see we're charging. 
Now let's go back into the snow. And I need to keep an eye on the amps there. And there we go, we have disconnect. So I'm gonna go get rid of the snow now. All right, now that is the first time I've used snow for a low temperature charging protection test and it worked. So I'm gonna put this all back together and uh, charge this battery back up and then put it into use. That's gonna wrap it up for this video. Now, obviously you can run your own solar charge controller. You're not stuck to the hub. Just connect it uh, directly via the, the lugs here on the front and you can use your own charge controller or charger or whatever you wanna do. Battery works, passed all my tests. Uh, as always, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you again, bye.